public hearing item number two. Okay. It's LP 2561, the Ardsley Garage, 165 East 77th Street, you do. AKA 159 to 165 East 77th Street, Manhattan. The landmark site is Borough of Manhattan Tax Map, Block 1412, Lot 25. Michael Carras is presenting. And just for the record, Commissioner Perlmutter is recused from this item and has left the hearing room. Okay, thank you very much. Bob Davis, testimony, thank you.
come up to pay for a lot of tuition. The garage building was built in 1913. Most of the present partners in the garage are descendants of the original partners that built it, directly or indirectly, in trust or otherwise. The architect for the building, George L. Pellum, designed more than 90 buildings in New York City between the 1890s and 1930s. My understanding is that no recognized historian has judged him a particularly important architect of that era. And this building has not been cited for even the most comprehensive and detailed history of or guide the city's building. The letter that first informed us of the LCC's interest in designating the garage identified it as exemplifying the architect and deity association of style. While the building's facade is clearly intended to give it some dignity, professionals we have consulted agree that it has virtually no relationship those In form of those opinions, the LCC staff then responded and said that they find the building worthy of designation of Euphoric's topology as an early and ambitious example of the garage purpose built for orderliness. As to its historical topology, as an example of a garage from the second decade of the 1900s, the oddly is respectable, but not very remarkable response to that emerging. The architect merely applied a facade with a patchwork of historical and geometric contemporary elements to a straightforward culture construction. The Osley is a solidly built building that has stood up very well, operating as a garage for the past 100 years. It has been well maintained. We hope to continue its operation as a garage for a good many years. Since this promises to be its best economic year, we have taken good care of the building and just had extensive repair work done in this facility. That's not to say that sometime in the future, the different use of the building as planned may not better serve the community or that the present building may become obsolete in terms of the environmental requirements and building codes of the future. I do not envision that during my lifetime the present building or the property will be used for any other purpose than as a garage. However, my concern as managing partner and as the trustee of estates and representing other trusts and educational and medical institutions that are partners in the building is to fulfill my fiduciary duty to ensure that the property is used for its best purpose and to prevent restriction of its future development by the landmark commission regulation. I am of the opinion that this applicant is not only the best owner of the garage building, but also its community, many members of which might prefer a building in our location other than the garage. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Henry Burr, yes. Right. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse John Dick. I'm, I'm sorry. John Morris Dixon. Pardon that. Examining the style of this garage, the key part that was covered by the landmark designation, I find no evidence that it exemplifies either of the two styles that the LCC staff cited in the original. I've had the good fortune to examine some fine landmarks of the arts and crafts style in the United States and in Europe, as well as key examples of the succession style in Vienna. I see no meaningful connection to them in the facade. What I see 
ask a question to that building the architectural quality, the LPC staff has indicated an interest in the typology of early parking garage, which is perhaps understandable. But beyond a workable interior organization, a modern facade, it just doesn't, this building just doesn't seem to have enough architectural or broader cultural significance to justify imposing the obligation of landmark designation on the owners or on the city. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Barbara Zay, please. Okay, thank you. Michael Hall. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else to, to be heard? Okay, with that, we thank everyone for being here for the, um, for the public hearing, and we'll close, the, close it for now. Motion and a second without objection. The hearing is closed. Thank you. We'll go on to the preservation side of things in about two minutes. <laughs>